Shalom, Kohalaya, La Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawa Shai, Bahasham, Rahachodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone who grew well. Shalom, Machasad, Bahabaka, your peace and mercy to the elect, I'm your fellow servant, I'm Yadi. Represent the GMS Church in Cleveland back in the spirit. I hope and I pray this is a fine lesson. <clears throat> Can't wait to the Heavenly Father wipe the smiles off these people's faces, mainly our people. If you turn to the Heavenly Father, we could get the fuck out of here. You see? But they're too wrapped up in their possessions. He looked like he got an Audemars on. I'm not that good with watches, but the watch on his wrist looked like an Audemars. That's one of the watches that they, what's the word, um, sensationalize. You see, these type of particular brands and things of that nature, these Edomites, they fucking one hand wash another, and these different Armani suits. and You see? And eventually, they, they, our sorrow is going to be turned into joy. Well, the scripture talk about, um, Yahweh Shah mentioned that to the disciples. Um, the world, they're going to rejoice, roughly paraphrasing. But I found this kind of, not I didn't find this funny at all, to be completely honest. You know, even though, you know, we don't have any concrete proof or evidence, you know, like an audio recording or a video recording of them literally saying this, but that's the way niggas be thinking anyway. You think they mad? No, wait till I get my son into the WNBA. Look here, man. The Heavenly Father's about to destroy this place. To destroy this place. The Heavenly Father's about to make a speedy riddance of this place. America, also known as Babylon the Great according to the Holy Scriptures, and it's prophesied to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. While well, you niggas laughing and kiki. Scripture talk about, uh, you know, uh, a wise man scares the smile a little, because ain't shit funny. You see, we should be ashamed that we in this position, even if, like, 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 like Uncle Ruckus told that nigga, uh, what's Huey the granddad name? I forget his name, but he was cut, supposed to cut, uh, Jebediah, that was his name, Jebediah, that's his spiritual name, he was supposed to cut his grass, and he told him, you know, it's a scene, I'm going to put it in the thing, he was like, this so you remember, no matter how much money you got, you just still a nigga, Jay-Z had that on his one album, you know, the OJ story, that was the name of the song, he was talking about, light still, dark still nigga, you see, you still just, a nigga, right, in the eyes of the so-called white men whose biblical nationality, the Edomites, because they know who you are. Y'all laughing at this, you know, whatever they was having a conversation about. They, This is, you know what I'm saying, the scripture talk about, um, woe to them that, 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 that laugh, for they shall mourn and weep. You see, because... <laughs> In the near future, you're going to have these celebrities, which these celebrities, they ain't no real celebrities or the apostles and the elders, man. The great millstone, the brothers who push in this world of truth and insincerity. They're the real celestial power. You know, the Heavenly Father has endowed them with spiritual power from on high. they the real celebrities, man. You niggas ain't no stars, okay? Because if I'm not mistaken, that's what the word celebrity goes back to, celestial. Or if, if I'm not mistaken, right? But the Lord said he mentioned it, man. And and even and you ain't gonna have any and you had that dude, um, the millionaire morning the millionaire morning shop. I forget what his name is. And he drove past the brothers in Detroit in his Porsche 911, listen to Sade. And that's spiritual because I watched the video that Apostle DeHar mentioned in his video, and he was saying that he listened to Sade, and I'm familiar with that song. And he was saying, if you were my making jokes, right? But I was thinking that spiritual that he was listening to that song because in the next line of that song, she said, if you were mine, I wouldn't want to go to heaven. So that's how a lot of you Jakes think in this society, man. And they asked him, yeah, the brothers said, what are you? Yeah, but the, the, the brothers was asking him, what are you? And he said, rich. All right. You ain't even on the Forbes list, man, and that's the broke people's list, nigga. So you ain't rich. You see, you dumb niggas, man. That ain't money anyway. Gold and silver is money pursuant to the scriptures. Cattle, land, slaves, resources. You niggas ain't fucking rich, man. 
you know, um, what is that? Luke Slocky. Let me see. I'm going to just look the word rich up as well, man. Because you niggas, you, 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 you niggas ain't rich, man. Right? The, the Heavenly Father said he told the poor this were a rich in faith. So if you ain't rich in faith, nigga, you really poor. The Lord even said that. Thou are, uh, I think, he, I forget which church he was referring to in the book of Revelations, the third chapter. I want to say he was talking to, damn, which church was that? I forget which church. Diatra, one of those churches. Please forgive me. That's the spirit going, the brothers going over Revelations, the third chapter today, you know? But um, this evening, right? Shortly, um, but the Lord said, "You poor and naked, thou you a wretch." Roughly paraphrasing, you poor and naked, you niggas ain't really got no, because because what this word pursuant to Proverbs the eighth chapter is is is, 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 is more precious than rubies, and you niggas don't even got no real rubies and stones, man. You niggas got diamonds, and a lot of them diamonds they they were talking about it. The organic, that organic, the dude. Mr. Organic him. I forget the other dude's name, the other Jake did. You had the uh nigga from Chicago, the scamming dude, uh Bandman Kevo. He wasn't even wearing his jewelry, but he was mentioning about how he had bought a six hundred thousand dollar diamond chain and then he can't even get a hundred and fifty stacks back for that shit, man. You see? So you niggas ain't rich, man. But guess what? Oh, go ahead, live it up, man. Cause eventually he's gonna be weeping and gnashing the teeth, man. Right? Um This is uh, uh, so like Luke 6 and 20. And he lifted his eyes on his disciples. Who is this? It's referring to our Lord and Savior, how we're shy, man. And because the Lord is paying attention in the spirit, you see, because if the Lord watching the churches that, that he wrote, that he commissioned um, the uh, John, as he's known as John the Revelator, right? Um, he commissioned him to, to write those letters to the churches of Asia Minor, you see? He was getting on particular, all the churches really is out of the seven churches. He was getting on all of them except the church of Philadelphia, man. So and because he was watching them in the spirit and telling them to correct certain things. So how much more you think the Heavenly Father ain't watching you niggas, man? Because these niggas really think that this shit going, going to keep going unchecked and that the Heavenly Father is unaware. The Lord said, he that created the eye shall he not see, he that created the ear shall he not hear. Our forefather Joshua he brought all the elders and the, the officers and everybody together when he was about to die. And he brought a stone and said, it's a witness be between you, you know, that you say you were going to serve the Lord. This stone is a witness. So even the stones, the, the walls and shit, the scriptures talk about a cry out. You know, the Lord hear everything, man. Ain't nothing kept from the heavenly father, man. The Lord, the Lord knows, man. Right. He is. He is this. He to be. He is, man. Luke 6 and 20, and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. And all you niggas in, the, in, this, in, in these different industries, y'all all practice nepotism. It ain't just fucking LeBron James, man. Everybody, because niggas, you know, this the wokeism, this the woke era. You got the wokeism going on. Everybody think they woke, talk about nepotism and this. And they, nigga, LeBron James ain't the only one that um, participate in nepotism. The, the, all these niggas in the industry, man, whether they're a producer, whether they're a song. Lil Yachty, that's how he got in the industry. Um, his father was a producer. Megan Thee Stallion, her mother was connected to somebody. Uh, Offset, he danced in a, um, a Whitney Houston video. It's all this information that out here. All you niggas practice nepotism, man. You know, uh, what's that nigga name? Um, he was from, he's from New York. His name is CJ or something like that. Yeah, you, know, you got something known as an industry plant. They talking about the one chick, uh, what's her name? She looked like, um, Betty Bop, uh, what the fuck is this bitch name, man? Oh, that nigga Eda, that nigga a munch. Name is something to eat her for lunch. Whatever her name is, even that chick. So I'm pretty sure if you go do some digging and some research, man, you'll come to the conclusion and the realization all these niggas participate in that shit, man. You see, nepotism is basically the practice of you doing favors for close friends and family members and relatives, man. Matter of fact, I was gonna look the word rich up. Let me let me let me let me look the word um nepotism up too while I'm at it, alright? So like it must should have been on here already. Um so this is um the fuck is this? Kill man.
Etymology Online Dictionary. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm going to look the word nepotism. Nepo. Nep. Hold on. Nepotism. God damn it. Golly. Lucky, this thing is tweaking. All right, nepotism, right? Because you got everybody with all use these big words now. Everybody's so educated now. So to talk about knowledge shall increase, roughly paraphrasing, because you got the World Wide Web niggas getting X and Google and Hey Siri and, you know, all these fucking devices. Nepotism announced as favoritism shown to relatives, especially an appointment to high office. This nigga LeBron James has got his son a four-year contract with the Los Angeles Lakers. That shit only worth four million. Bro, it ain't even worth no fucking money. Because that nigga had to do something. LeBron James, man. You know? And niggas say they do the things that they do, the abominable act, because they love their children. Yeah, okay. I, you know, we all love our children, man. You niggas don't love your children, because if you did, you're teaching the commandments put to the scriptures. You'll tell them about the Lord. Favoritism shown to relatives, especially in appointment to high office. So a lot of these judges, when you look at the board of commissions and the CMHA here in um, Cleveland, they all jakes. They all niggas. You better believe the brother says Auntie Stephanie Tubb Jones and all these niggas that's in these different positions. They all got nepotism. They all per practice and, uh, and, do and participate in nepotism, man. You know? Oh, nepotism from Italian nepotismo from nepoti nephew. I always say see nephew. All right, grandson nephew original, originally practice of granting privileges to a pops to a pope's oh so like it, to a pope's nephew, which was a euphemism for his natural son. Wow. Cun. You know? So yeah, uh I'm gonna go back to that precept as well if I get this word rich. And I'm gonna look it up and I see what it's saying in blue letter too. Um so this is uh Luke six and 20 again and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said blessed be you blessed be ye poor for yours is the kingdom of he of the most high right because the majority of the believers and followers of the lord they're going to be poor and destitute man you know they ain't really going to have too much riches and you're going to have a small i repeat small percentage of jakes that be made maybe well off you know, like secret disciples and particular jakes that's working in particular industries, man. But for the most part, the Lord's following is going to be poor and destitute, man. Verse 21, blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. And we hunger now, not necessarily physically, we hunger spiritually for righteousness. And we're going to be filled. we filled with the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father. And eventually, we even going to be hungry, um, li uh, uh, you know, literally, literally hungry. And 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 we gonna be filled pursuant to Isaiah sixty five and thirteen. My my servant shall eat. We gonna be eating while you niggas y'all ain't gonna be laughing then. We just gonna be like SpongeBob and Squidward and the goddamn the conk. Was that soft anyway? You know they was worshiping that idol, but using that episode as an example, man, we gonna be eating good. Just like Vidor Mortison in the movie, um. The road when they stumbled upon that uh bomb um bomb uh tornado shelter or whatever the fuck uh what is it called I forget what they call it. Is it the, you know uh a bunker it's locky bunker right they said bless are ye that weep now for ye shall laugh and we we weep when we do these lessons we do these video epistles when we go out on the highways and byways we weep and we crying. You know, that's, that's, that's synonymous with crying, weeping is, right? <laughs> Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, when niggas hate us. That dude, Alton, morning dude, that dude, he was talking about, um, you know, I, we, we, we were too old, a room nine or something, basically indirectly saying that we need to be committed into a psychiatric ward and put in a fucking straight jacket and, and, and track the monitor. We already track the monitor, nigga. Fuck by the highest level of government. Ain't nobody worried about you, nigga. Blessed uh, are ye when men shall hate you and people hate us, man. And when they shall separate you from their company, then that's going to get more 
The Heavenly Father going to heighten that hateful spirit upon two-thirds of our people to the point they ain't going to want to be around us and shall reproach you. All right? Nigga will try to shame us, but pursuant to the scripture, every tongue that rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. So we're going to find you niggas guilty according to the law. You're going to get condemned through the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. It was beloved son, Yahweh Shah. It says, and cast out your name is evil for the son of man's sake. Right. They all doing this because we believe in Yahweh by Hashem and Yahweh Shai, man. If we weren't preaching that, niggas wouldn't care what we do. We'll probably be well off in this society, man. Because in order to get well off, you just got to do left-handed shit in this society. 23. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. We go, it's right. So we should be rejoicing when niggas are good, good. We don't want to. We don't want to be around you niggas anyway, man. Cause you niggas is wicked, and you niggas is unbelievers. And the scriptures say, "Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers." You see, so we good. We glad that we we rejoicing that you niggas don't want to be around us, man. Right? But when all hell break loose, that's when everybody gonna want to be around us. But guess what? It's gonna be too late then. And they only going to want to be uh, around us, not even in sincerity, but just because they know that we attached to the Heavenly Father in truth and in sincerity, man. Yahweh, by Hashem, our Shai. It said, Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in heaven, right? Because we, you know, good to talk about store up your, your treasure in, in heaven. Well, Steve's don't break in and moth corrupt, roughly paraphrasing. So we building up our spiritual bank account, man. And we'll 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 take on the moniker zero approval gambit. Look that word up. Zero, look that phrase up. So like a zero approval gambit, right? And that's us. Um, for in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets, right? So the prophets went through these things as well, man. Right? The prophets of old. But woe unto you that are rich. Woe means death and destruction, adversity and affliction, man. Right? So all you jakes is rich, right? Let's see what it's saying in Latin. In the Greek, Salakia. Strong's G. For the word woe. Uai. Grief. Uai. Say grief, right? Let's, let's look it up in the... So, whoa, it said misery, trouble, great sorrow or distress. So, that's what's coming to all you rich jakes. Great sorrow and distress, man. Trouble. That's coming to you niggas, man. You see? Right? And let's look the word rich up. Because it said, woe to you that are rich. So, trouble and distress. Great sorrow coming to you niggas that's rich. You see? Because y'all going to go, y'all going to be broke again. Just like NBA, he, he do all that shit that he do to never go. You going broke, man. We going to get our riches in the kingdom, man. This is for the word rich. Strong's G, 4145. And Luke 6. Plusias. 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 Abounding with, it said wealthy. Figuratively, which you niggas ain't wealthy for real, man. Right, because if this devil were to take all your money, he could just turn off your, and that's what they, the direct, the, right, that's why it's going to be a digital reset, right? That's when we go transition into the MOTB, right? That tiny technology that he going to put on the right hand and the foreheads of all you bird brain Negroes, Latino, Native, and Seminole Indians, man. See? Because they would then, just like in the movie, In Time of Justin Timberlake, Right? Or just like a, uh, uh, what which movie was that man? Where they had the money and they could just take it out of their account. I forget Salaki. Um, it says um, is the word rich right? Wealthy, abounding in material resources. There it is, man. Metaphorically abounding, abundantly supplied. So these niggas got a ten bedroom mansion, a five car garage. Six of uh, $100,000 vehicles. Uh, um, you know, uh, Rick Ross, he got fucking, what did he, he put buffaloes on his on his promised land and they got, you know, vineyards and they invest in wine and ab ab abounding rich in Christian virtues at etern and eternal possession. So that's the elect. We're, we're rich in Christian virtues, you see? And eternal possessions because that's what we're looking for. 
We looking for the incorruptible crown. Two thirds of our people, y'all got a corruptible crown, man. Y'all, y'all, those riches is cankered, right? And the, you go into the word canker, if I'm not mistaken, goes into like made, um, uh, made useless or made worse by alterations and errors. So the money got altered, nigga. It ain't real. It ain't backed by gold, nigga. They altered it when they took away the gold standard, you dumb niggas. Why y'all laughing, man? You know? So back into the precept. Luke 6 and 24. But woe unto you that are rich. So great sorrow, distress, and trouble is coming to all you rich jakes out there, man. For ye have received your constellation. Right. Your constellation goes back to console. You jakes been consoled by this devil, man. You see? Now, when you go into the word um, console, uh, so like consultation, and I'm going to look it up on the um, etymology as well. It go back to the Greek word paraklesis. Strong's G, 3874. Paraklesis. Paraklesis, right? Paraklesis. This is for the word consultation, right? It says imploration, hortation, solace. Comfort, right? So you niggas being comforted, right? By your wealth and your resources, your riches. That's what's comfort you, man. You see? Like you got something known as comfort food. That's why you got people who got down 600 pound life. Because when they want comfort, they just get the fucking eating shit, man. So you niggas is comfort. You niggas is, you receive your comfort. That's why you're going to be in distress and sorrow and trouble going to be upon you niggas. Let's look it up. Slacky. It says consultation, consolement, psychological comforting after a trauma. Right. So after slavery, you niggas went through all the shit we went through, being oppressed and beat down as a people. Now you niggas being comforted after trauma. So this this comforts you psychologically, but what comforts us psychologically? This wisdom, understanding, knowledge of the heavenly Father. Granted, if we had riches, we'll be comforted, you know, too. But we'll, you know, not necessarily psychologically because we know that shit going to be taken away. And that ain't the real riches anyway. It says, consolement and solace are terms referring to psychological comfort given to someone who has suffered severe upsetting loss, such as the death of a loved one. Well, 400 years of slavery, that's a fucking, uh, 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 su that's a suffering severely, you know? Upsetting loss. You're going on auctioning blocks. You can't even be a man in this society, man. So that's the you suffering severely. You can't even be. You can't even. You know, like they tell women to in a womanhood, and you men can't even be in a manhood in this society. So that's severely you suffering severely, man. It is typically provided by expressing shared regret. For that loss and highlighting the hope for positive events in the future. And that's why these niggas together. Yo. Know? Because they don't forget where they come from. These niggas was probably raised in single family homes. Well, single parent home. We know LeBron James was. Because they highlight his fucking, his rise to fame. They document that shit, man. I don't know too much about Dwayne Wade. I didn't really look at, I know he went to Marquette. Uh, and then went to college somewhere, and then he played, drafted by the Miami Heat. Other than that, I don't know too much about Dwayne Wade's upbringing, which I'm not, you know, I ain't, I wouldn't be surprised if he was raised in a single parent home too. I think he was, man. You know, it says, consultation is an important topic arising in history, the arts, philosophy, and psychology. Consultation now. Comfort, sympathy, pity, commiseration, fellow feeling relief, help, aid, support. That's the point, man. So you, Jakes, received y'all comfort, man. That's why the Heavenly Father is about to discomfort you, Jakes. Verse 25. One to you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Right? It said, one to you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. You see Jake laughing, man. They will be mourning a week real soon, man. When they go to fucking Huntington Bank or Bank of America, whatever private institution that they fucking keep their money in, and they go to that bitch and it's on zero. 
And that's when they go be more than a weeping real, real talk because that money, that's a comfort too. Scripture says money is a defense. So when niggas got money, that's when they just run wax fat and kick and forsook the Lord. So when niggas got money, they say, man, just like Bootsy, he flicked the Lord off. That's because he got money. He ain't poor. And then you'll have a nigga who poor and destitute do that. You see? It says... <laughs> Um, and that's the point, man. I'm going to just stop at verse 25, man, you know? So I pray this with edifying. I give all glory on and praises. Call Lord and Lord Yahweh. Ba'ashem and Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem and Ha'chadash. Double honor city apostles and the elders of great millstone. Ruh wa shalom wa ma'chasala ba'k yah. Kwame ashala.